If you stand on our planet Earth, somewhere dark, and you look into the skies, you might see this incredible view known as the Milky Way. What exactly is it? Well, for many thousands of years, we didn't really know, until about a hundred years ago, when we actually realized that this is part of our own galaxy. In this particular video, we're going to discover the meaning behind the name Milky Way, and also talk a little bit about the history of our galaxy. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And let's actually zoom away from our planet Earth and move a little bit closer to this region of space known as the Milky Way. Now what we know about it today is very very different from what we thought about it thousands and hundreds of years ago. As a matter of fact, the ancient Greeks thought that this is actually the region of space where the planets meet the stars and basically create these unusual shapes that we see in the sky. But obviously today we know this is not exactly what's happening here. Now the Greeks also actually had um, a name for this, and the name related to the word milk. Uh, the actual legend is also very interesting, but basically the word milk in Greek is galactose, which actually means the milky thing in the sky. So this was the, the Greek name for this particular region of the sky. And if you uh, dissect this actual word a little bit more, you'll realize that it also is the reason why we have the word galaxy. So if I were to actually zoom out of here and to uh, actually look at this from the top, we would see the galaxy known as the Milky Way. This is our own, own galaxy, this is our home. And uh, so the word galaxy itself is actually a word that we use to describe these objects and it stems from the idea of milk or Milky Way. And let's actually get back to the same region of space where we were before um, and talk a little bit more about the actual origin of the name. So. Even though the Greeks called this the milky thing, the word uh, way came from the Romans. As a matter of fact, uh, the Roman uh, description for this region of sky is Via Lactea, which literally translates as the road of milk. So this is probably the earliest mention of the Milky Way in any literature, and this stems from something like uh, 2000 years ago, back in... The year 8 AD, uh, the Roman poet by the name of Ovid actually wrote in his book known as Metamorphoses um, that this particular region was known as uh, Via Lactea or the Milky Road. But this doesn't change the fact that we actually still have no real idea who was who was the first person to actually coin this term or who was the first to actually use this because the poets probably started using this term because it was already well known to everyone. And so why exactly is this called Milky Way? Well. It's obviously because of the actual shape. If you were to look at this uh, region of space um, where it's really, really, really dark, where there's no light pollution, and you were to see uh, what it actually looks like, it does resemble a kind of a milky stream across the sky. And what's really interesting is that this particular name was immortalized in the art of the Renaissance artist known as Jacopo Tintoretto, who painted uh, a famous painting known as The Origin of the Milky Way. This was back in 16th century, and this is uh, what his actual painting looks like. And so in this painting, he actually depicts the origin of this phrase. And so the origin of this particular word uh, goes something like this. Uh, Zeus had a child with his wife Hera, and they had a child by the name of Hercules, which you probably have heard of before. When uh, his wife was sleeping, uh, Zeus wanted to uh, make his child really strong, so he brought Hercules to his sleeping wife Hera and tried to uh, give him some milk from her breasts. But she awoken, uh, she woke up and was not very pleased with that, and she pushed the child away, and some of the milk spilled, creating this beautiful... Uh, Milky Way in the sky. Now, a lot of Greek mythology is usually based on adventures of Zeus or his interaction with his wives and his sons and so on and so forth. And this is, of course, one of those uh, myths that may actually be something that Greeks really believed or may have been actually created later on by the Renaissance um, poets that wanted to kind of make it all consistent and all of it had to make sense. But it was really not until the year 1610 when we actually realized what we were looking at. As a matter of fact, the first to realize what this all was, was infamous Galileo Galilei. He looked at the sky and realized that what we thought was just a collection of stars or possibly planets was actually a lot more. It was basically a combination of stars orbiting far, far away from us and that there were actually other galaxies out there that you kind of see right there that may have actually been similar to our own as well. 
But it was really in the 20th century when we finally realized what this all was. Um, back in the year 1912, uh, an astronomer by the name of Vesto Slifer actually realized that what we thought were nebula in, in the sky were actually other galaxies, and a lot of them may have actually resembled the shape of our own galaxy. Later on, f further observations by Herbert Curtis in 1917, and of course, Edwin Hubble in uh, 1920, um, further basically proved that not only were there actually quite a lot of various galaxies out there that you're about to see because I'm about to increase um, luminosity here, but also that um, the variety of galaxies uh, out there make our own galaxy quite uh, unimpressive, quite, quite normal. As a matter of fact, our own galaxy is no different from many other galaxies out there. And so even though the Greek word galactos originally only referred to our own Milky Way, which is still somewhere behind us right now, we're slowly moving away from it, but we probably can't see it anymore because it's kind of far away. Um, with time, as we realize that uh, there's just so many galaxies out there, as a matter of fact, today we believe there's like a trillion of them, which is uh, quite a large number, it's one followed by 12 zeros. Uh, we later on realized that, well, now we just have to call each one of them galaxy. So the word Milky Way or Milky Thing applies to every single one of these uh, bodies. But nevertheless, uh, it's really all about our own Milky Way. That's where it's all begun and it's basically the origin of our own species. It's the origin of everything we know about the universe and it's obviously our own home as well. With time, Milky Way will actually collide with uh, another galaxy called Andromeda and will actually combine into uh, a single piece, making it something called Milkdromeda or maybe something else that we'll decide to name later on, but it won't be for a while because this will actually occur 2.5 billion years from now on. For now though, what you need to realize is that Milky Way is a term that has been used or misused for quite a long time until we realize that there's quite a lot of other Milky Ways out there and many of them are just as fascinating as our own. So next time you go outside and you look into the dark sky and you see all of this beauty in front of you in, in darkness of the night, just remember how amazing how incredible our galaxy actually is and how amazingly large cosmos and the universe are as well. And anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video. I wanted to briefly talk about the term Milky Way, how it all started and what it all means, and how the word galaxy is actually the Greek word for milk or milky things. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye. And what we're going to do is we're going to move really, 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 really fast, really, really, really far away from our own galaxy and try to reach the end of the universe as we know it. And it's going to come anytime soon, and there we go. The end of the observable universe. Now it's complete darkness.